How's it going, everybody? And welcome to Just the Buddies Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan. And I'm your host, Daniel. And today we're doing a podcast. Woo! If you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button and also hit the like button. It's the one with the thumbs up with a thumbnail on the back of it pointing up to the sky. Also, comment what you guys want us to talk about next week. As you guys can see throughout this video, we took your guys' suggestions from last week and we talked about it this week. So let's get into it. Okay, so we're starting off with some two-sentence horror stories. Oh, gosh. I like these. These, these No, I mean, they're interesting, but they are very uh, dark. and They are very dark. Psycho. Yeah. Psychopathy <laughs> vibes. Okay. My seven foot two brother snuck past the roller coaster's max height restriction sign. We went under a low bridge, and now he's just the right height. Nice. So his head's gone. His head's he's gone. He's dead. He's gone. So he can't, he can't ride any more rides. No, he's dead. He can't do anything. Well, who, who even jokes like that? Uh, that's, that's not, that was not very good. Yeah. My daughter's animatronic dog wouldn't stop barking, so I grabbed the box it came in to see if I could figure out how to shut it up. When I shook the box, the batteries fell out. <gasps> do you it's get it? an AI with its own mind with no Megan. batteries. Real life Megan. In dog form. Okay. My surgeon told me that my daughter's heart transplant had been a success. When I was relieved, I asked, so that means I'll live? He took his daughter's heart? <laughs> Dang. That's crazy, right? That screwed up. Okay, sometimes if I get scared, I knock on my parents' bedroom door in the middle of the night. It seems to bother them a lot more now than it did when I was alive. Okay. The guy's a ghost or something. That, that, I was like, what? That, that one? Nah, that was not good. You don't like those ones? Not that one. <laughs> Dude, it's like... <laughs> Thank you for watching Two Sentence Story. <laughs> Comment which one your, was your favorite, but I like the ones where it makes you think about it. This uh -huh. is like acknowledging. It's like, very blunt. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm a ghost now. Creepy. You know what I mean? <laughs> I thought the heart transplant one was pretty good. Yeah. That one was more subtle. The one about the, the last one and the one about the which, roller coaster. Yeah. Like, who's going to say that after their brother died? <laughs> yeah. Like, come on. Yeah, that is, it is a little weird. On to the next. <laughs> okay. Now it's time for verses. Now, this week, we're going to keep it the same as last week. Okay. I added that we could use their powers. Okay. Okay. But we're going dynamic duos. Dynamic duos. The best duos in all of pop culture. So the first one. Okay. Tom and Jerry versus Chip and Dale. Okay. Tom and Jerry versus Chip and Dale. And they have their powers, meaning that they're like, can use resources. Yeah. Tom and Jerry. Not even a question? No, I just feel like, okay, look at what Tom and Jerry does. Like, you know, they really beat the heck out of each other. That is true. I mean, Jerry, he, he might be able to 1v2 Chip and Dale. I always felt that Tom and Jerry, that cinematic universe, was definitely more violent than Disney. Oh, yeah. So I think you got to give it to Tom and Jerry. Okay, Lilo and Stitch versus Timon and Pumbaa. Lilo and Stitch with... Stitch's powers mm -hmm. versus Timon and Pumbaa. Yeah. I mean, come on. Right? The guy, <laughs> like Stitch, Stitch might be hungry. He might need to go eat some pig. Does Stitch eat, like, animals like that? Why not? Uh, I guess. If he eats human food, we eat animals. I some of know. us do. Some, some us. choose not to. Some choose not to, yeah. But, you know, sadly, I eat animals. I mean, yeah. There's no, there, what, what am I going to do? <laughs> what am I going to do? Okay, okay. There's thousands of videos of us eating. We can't hide that. Yeah. <laughs> Cosmo and Wanda versus Aladdin and Genie. I feel like we've done this. Cosmo and Wanda versus Aladdin and Genie? Yeah. We've done Aladdin and Genie together, but not versus Cosmo and Wanda, have we? Yeah. Really? But we did, like, I don't think we used powers. Oh. Actually, I, know, I think we've done this one. Have we? I'm pretty sure I said Cosmo and Wanda because... They have two wizards, and Genie is just one. But you got to think of it like this. Can Wa Cosmo and Wanda only use their powers if someone wishes them to? Mm, that's a good point. See, Genie has Aladdin to wish things. Right. So I guess you're useless if you don't have, like, Timmy there to make the wishes. Right. Mm. That changed the game. Yeah. I think you got to give it to Genie then. I think so, too. Because Genie's just as good as whoever's making the wishes for him, right? Right. Oh, so yeah, if you don't have the person that's making the wishes, either party would lose. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Cosmo and Wanda can't just start, like, 
doing maybe they can though. No, I think you're right. I don't think they can. Okay, Shrek and Donkey versus Stewie and Brian. Oh gosh. <laughs> Shrek and Donkey. Okay, let's let's go off the Shrek 2 video game. Donkey, <laughs> it's got that spin kick move. Yeah. Shrek's got, you know, super like basically super strength. Yeah. And Stewie has the mind of a thousand IQ. Yeah. And he's gonna like just he has like crazy weapons. Right. Brian also can fight and has a gun. Yes. Pretty like obviously I don't think Shrek is bulletproof. I don't think he's blue bulletproof, but I think he can take a lot. Yeah, he can take a lot. Yeah. But have we seen him get shot? <laughs> no. Because I don't know why I feel like in my brain when I look at him, I'm yeah. like, oh, maybe he's bulletproof. Something about him, I'm like, God, oh, yeah. I can see a bullet bouncing off you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So I feel like, but based on the history of Shrek, right. I feel like we can't say he's bulletproof. We have No, 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 he's not. You know why? Because we've seen him get shot with an arrow. He's gotten shot with an arrow, and he was penetrated by an arrow. Oh. So if he was penetrated by an arrow, a bullet will definitely go through him. That's true. Stewie and Brian win. Yeah. Because at that point, when Stewie and Brian have weapons, Donkey's really not going to make it. No. Not going to make it very long. Donkey's going to run. <laughs> He's going to run and maybe get Big Gingy. Comment if you guys think that Shrek or Donkey would win. I don't think they would win, but let us know. Okay, for the last one. SpongeBob and Patrick okay. versus Scooby and Shaggy. SpongeBob and Patrick. Scooby and Shaggy. Yes. Scooby. Okay, are we talking Super Saiyan? Scooby, I mean Shaggy. Mm, no, that that that, uh, that would just give it to him. Okay, let's see about this. So Scooby and Shaggy, let's just look at them. You know, like the personalities and everything, right? Yeah. Both are scared of everything. Right. Both eat a lot of food. Yes. And that's about it. That's they do a lot it. of running. They do They're a good. lot of running. So if we're talking about them using their powers, right? I could see them running, right, <laughs> luring. You know, SpongeBob and Patrick, SpongeBob and Patrick, and then trapping them as if oh, they're one of the monsters. I see. See, that was that. See, that's a little different. That, that you thought I was different. gonna go SpongeBob and Patrick. I yeah, I mean, but SpongeBob has karate. No, 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 no. Listen to me now. Here, oh, here we are. Here, whoa. okay. SpongeBob and Patrick. Yeah, you gotta remember now. They're in Bikini Bottom. Okay. <laughs> I knew this was Scooby good. and Shaggy are like big. They're normal sized people. <laughs> yeah. SpongeBob is a sponge. Yeah, and Patrick's a sponge. When starfish. you put them side by side now, it's no longer in SpongeBob world, okay? We're talking real <laughs> world now. Real people. Right. You see right. when real people show up in Bikini Bottom? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're yeah. huge. Right. Right? Mm hmm. SpongeBob sends no chance. Yeah. That's true. I guess we will eat him. It doesn't, yeah, it really doesn't make sense no, it doesn't. for Patrick and SpongeBob. I think win. that's on you. That is on me. Yeah. <laughs> You, you know, you know, I, I, I wasn't thinking of like, okay, when SpongeBob, like, they're actually like super small compared to them, but I was just, I don't know. Maybe don't know if what they're I'll... the same size, then SpongeBob would use karate and yeah. have a chance. But no. other than that, Shaggy could just step on him. Yeah. Well, thank you for watching Versus. Okay, so moving on. Birthdays. Birthdays. birthdays huh? For everyone who doesn't know, I've talked about like the most common birthday, the most rarest birthday, but today I, I want it go a different approach something a little more unique than uh than previous oh. times <laughs> <laughs> so do you know what the birthday paradox is no what is that so you know how like we all have like a birthday twin where someone has the same birthday as you but what if i told you that you're actually a lot closer to someone that has the same birthday as you and today we're going to confirm if the birthday paradox is true or fake i don't even know what the birthday paradox is okay so for everyone that's watching the video if 23 people view this video there's a 50 percent chance that someone will have the same birthday as you so if you comment your birthday there's a 50% chance that someone will have the same day as you. Are you serious? 50%? Yeah, but if this video gets 75 views, the percentage shoots way up. There's a 99.9% .9 chance that someone will have the same birthday as you. So if you comment your birthday, that means for sure someone will have the same birthday as you. And the whole birthday paradox thing is like based on like a math formula, and apparently it's supposed to be true. Well, I guess we're going to see if it's true then. It is interesting when you look at like a college classroom. I mean, some of those classes have like 100 people so that means for sure for sure yeah okay so moving on i want to get into theories so do you know the avatar theory no so in avatar 2 we're introduced to a new character and his name is spider 
And it turns out, right, that Spider is actually the son of Miles. But we see at the end of the movie that Spider still cares for his dad and saved his life when he was drowning. But even after saving his dad, he decides to still stay with the Sully family and stays on Pandora. But what if I told you that Spider is actually going to ruin the Sully family? How would he do that? So remember when Spider gets captured by Miles and like they're interrogating him, trying to figure out where Jake Sully and his family is? Yeah. And Miles has Spider take him to where Jake Sully is. But we know that Spider cannot breathe on Pandora without a breathing mask. So Miles gives Spider a breathing mask so that he could breathe on Pandora but Miles tells him that if you decide to run we have a tracking device in your mask so don't even think about running away but when you look at the end of the movie you see Spider still wearing that same mask and he's literally wearing it with the Sully family so this shows that Miles is still tracking him and knows their location and he knows where the Sully family is and this will allow Miles to have the upper hand in the next movie okay it does make a lot of sense because why would they have Miles say that about the mask if it didn't have anything to do with it yeah I don't feel like James Cameron's gonna put that in the movie just for like for no reason right and then also have Spider save him there's something to it man spider already ruined the family by just saving him yeah that's what, that was what i was thinking when i was watching that i was like dude why why'd you do that spider you saw what he just did he's not even your dad he's a clone yeah and he just killed your best friend do better man do better spider do better spider really messed that one up yeah you dropped the ball <laughs> <laughs> you really dropped the ball. Okay, so moving on from that, there was some crazy news on Twitter. Okay, oh, so gosh. in the year 2013, right, LeBron was in the finals. Okay. Okay, now his game-worn jersey of the Game 7 in yeah. the finals just sold for $3.7 million. $3.7 million? Yeah. So I guess the current record before that— Wait, hang on, hang on. $3.7 for one jersey that he wore one time? Yeah, for that jersey. Wait, hang on, hang on. He only wore the jersey one time. I think so. I think he only wore it for that game. Oh, my gosh. But the the previous record for, like, a sale on a game-worn jersey? Yeah. LeBron's jersey, six times that. Oh, my gosh. Can, I, can I just say something, though? Yeah. If I was LeBron and yeah. I saw 3.7 million, you know what I'd do? First quarter, jersey. <laughs> Second quarter, <laughs> You know what? I think there's a little rip in mine, a little itchy. Yeah. Let me, you know, this one has a tag on it. That's smart. Kind of annoying. <laughs> right? By the end of the game, you got four of them. Right. Right. That's how it works in basketball, right? You got quarters, right? Yeah. Four quarters. So yeah. you got, there you go. That 3.7. 3. LeBron, I just got you some more money, okay? I 4X'd you. Gosh, that's so crazy to think about, though. 3.7 million for a jersey. Yeah. Not autographed. <laughs> Not off. Not Gosh, come on, LeBron. You think at least you could do is autograph it? All that was on there was his sweat, which is probably you know worth more. <laughs> <laughs> you know, with with the way we're going with technology and yeah. cloning. Oh, yeah. That's why. You know what? Maybe that's why they spent three point seven billion because they actually wanted to take his DNA. Gosh, that's actually kind of scary. Yeah. Can you imagine though, LeBron? Think about this. Four, four times. <laughs> Don't. You know, quadruple your money. But there's also some other crazy news. So speaking of cloning. Okay. Okay. Have you seen how they're bringing woolly mammoths back? What? So a bioscience company called Colossus just made a full plan how to bring woolly mammoths back from extinction. And they're going to place them in the tundra. How can you bring back something that's extinct? So what they're doing is they're literally taking DNA off of mammoth fossils from like thousands of years ago. And they're creating embryos with the DNA. So they have mammoth DNA and elephant DNA in one embryo. And they put that in existing elephants and in like five or six years those elephants are going to give birth to mammoths there is no way that's going to happen yeah, so when they're born they're going to have characteristics of mammoths so they're going to have the fur they're going to have the taller head the smaller ears and apparently colossal said that putting mammoths back into existence is going to save the tundra okay to be fair i don't know anything about science but i do know jurassic park and we all know how that went down right yeah i mean it's kind of scary no it's scary it's very scary it's not kind of scary it's really scary because think about if this goes successfully right they're going to not stop. Oh, well, yeah, we accomplished what we wanted to do. There's an end goal, right? And this is just the beginning. Yeah. And you also don't really know the consequences unless you try. You know what I mean? Yeah. So they really don't know what it could do. Well, another thing that they have to look at, too, is if you bring back a woolly mammoth, right, from thousands of years ago. Now, whatever is going on, say the atmosphere at the time, right? Say there was some, I don't know not chemical, but say there was some kind of parasite or some kind of infection disease uh -huh. that was within that DNA of that woolly mammoth, right? Yeah. You bring it back Ooh. to life. Now that elephant or that woolly mammoth is now from, could be shedding that disease. Yeah. Oh, that's a good point. Because, you know, I think not, I don't know when it was, but they did find a mammoth that was like frozen 
and it had the fur and everything. Yeah, I kind of remember that. And I, I think they're using the DNA from fossils they found in the ice because it's frozen. So everything's like kind of there, you know? But it is kind of crazy, though, what they're doing with frozen people. Like Ted Williams, he's a baseball player, right? Famous baseball player. And he wanted to, you know, like hope for the future that if he freezes himself now, that somehow, you know, doctors and technology will progress. And when, you know, 100 years from now, they're able to unfreeze them and they could bring him back to life. Wait a second. I never heard about this. Yeah. So it's a real thing. They freeze people, right? Wait, no, so someone actually did it. Yeah. No, there's celebrities that have done it. Oh, really? They're frozen right now. And they're hoping to wake up in a better future? Yeah. Oh. Wow. That's a big that's a, that's a that's a big risk. But there's a lot of controversy behind this. Okay? So Ted Williams, his son, okay, had him get frozen, right? Uh-huh. We don't know if that was Ted Williams' decision, but I do know this that Ted Williams' son wanted to inherit the money, right? So I think he might have had his dad die early and froze him, right? Saying that he wants to be frozen for a bit like to be woken up in the future. Oh my god! But really, maybe he. I think he might have killed his dad. That's sketchy. Yeah, that's crazy. That's dirty. That is dirty. That's some dirty money. What the heck? Yeah. So there's a lot of speculation. It gets kind of. It's kind of uh, wow. eerie. But I think he might have like killed his dad. That's crazy. I mean, this whole thing with yeah, just they call it de extinction. Just that alone sounds kind of crazy. Yeah, de extinction. So you're probably that's the idea of. Getting rid of extinction. Right. And just think about this. If they found DNA of a woolly mammoth on the fossil from 3,000 years ago, yeah, there's a lot of things that might have DNA on it still. You know, what like, are you talking a, about? like a lot of fossils that we have now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of extinct things. Well, what I wonder is, say, like, with the dinosaur bones that we have, right? Yeah. Now, can you extract DNA from the bone? I'm sure you can. I, I honestly think you can. I think... Yeah, I'm pretty sure we. I'm pretty sure you can. Well, before you know it, welcome to Jurassic Park. Gosh, I really hope we're smart enough not to do that, cause that's just that's a little. Maybe though, right? Can you imagine going to war and everyone's riding on a T Rex? You wouldn't lose. No, but you got to figure that the other <laughs> other sides got T Rexes too. Could you imagine though weaponizing dinosaurs? Gosh, I hope it never comes to that. And they give like T Rexes like longer arms. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and the T Rex is like, whoa, finally. <laughs> You know? You know what I mean? <laughs> they take the weakness of every dinosaur and they just make it better. That might make a make that's a good movie. Right? It's like uh someone goes back in time, right? Uh-huh. And has technology. Like, look. Oh this is your weakness. Oh you don't know it now. But look, I'll make your life easier. They're like, oh yeah. <laughs> Talking dinosaurs. <laughs> So moving on to the next like crazy story, I was looking at some old news articles. Okay. And this is probably one of the craziest mysteries that were swept under the rug. Oh, here we go. So there was this guy named Danny who went on a ski trip with his friends to New York. But when they were skiing, his friends noticed that Danny was gone. Like they couldn't find him. And he didn't return back to the place they were staying at. So they reported him missing. And literally six government agencies, 130 people on foot, two ski patrols, two helicopters, and canine units all were searching for him for 7,000 hours and they didn't find him. You're telling me they got all these people looking for him and they couldn't find him? Exactly. Then six days later, Danny's wife got a call on her phone from like an unknown number. So she picked up and it was Danny. And he said, I don't know where I am. I don't know how I got here. So then he started looking around where he was and he noticed he was in Sacramento. How does he go from New York all the way to Sacramento? So what's crazy is police got to him. And when they got to him, he was still wearing the same exact clothes. Like he had his ski coat, his ski goggles. Everything was the same. But they noticed that he got a haircut and he had a different phone. And Danny said he doesn't know how he got there. All he knows is a truck driver dropped him off and he has no idea who it was. Dude, this is disturbing. Yeah, and I think this happened back in 2018. And they still don't know to this day. Who was driving the truck or what happened to Danny? So what we do know is that he woke up in Sacramento, right? Yeah. With so, a different phone. With a different phone and a haircut. Yeah, and a haircut. But he had his like, ski stuff on still. So. Yeah, like the ski goggles. He had everything. And we know that he was brought to Sacramento by a truck driver. Yeah. But we don't know who the truck driver is. We don't know who the truck driver was. And he, don't, he doesn't remember how he got like from... New York to Sacramento. Gosh. So somehow he must have been, he was obviously skiing, right? Yeah. So he's skiing, 
and something happens. He loses consciousness because obviously, yeah, because he doesn't even know what's right. going on. So he wakes up in Sacramento. Yeah, and he calls his wife because he has his wife's number memorized. Yeah, and he has a new phone, so he's calling her, and he's like, "I don't know what's going on. I don't know where I am. I don't know what happened to me." Could you imagine if he was like a secret agent? Oh my god! Like the government needed him for like a secret mission. Oh, they drugged him or something. <laughs> okay. Think about this. Why no, give him a haircut? That is true. That is that is weird. Why give him a new phone? The haircut is weird. Yeah, the haircut's weird. Give him a new phone, right? Yeah. Maybe it's a special phone. Right. And after that, uh, he didn't want to take any press interviews or anything, like, speak on it. Because you know why? Because he remembers. <laughs> he remembers what he did. Gosh, that's just so weird. Because I, I looked it up. He was missing for six days. Yeah. Okay? The drive from New York to Sacramento okay. is six days. So he was missing... For the whole duration of the trip, from the drive, basically. Yeah. What? And it's so crazy, right? When his friends n reported him missing, like six government agencies, over 130 people on foot, searching everywhere. Two helicopters, canine. And you don't find him? Yeah. I feel like the canine should have sniffed it out. Unless, when he went missing, it was just, got in the truck and left. And was gone. It's I want to know. I want to know what he was doing. Right. But we maybe, don't know. Maybe he was having an affair. <laughs> Could you imagine that? Could you imagine if he was cheating on his wife and this whole thing was just his little plan of <laughs> cheating on her? Let me just end up in Sacramento. Yeah, let me just. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> and maybe the truck driver wasn't a truck driver, but maybe it was mm. his whoever, you know, special partner. Or maybe he took a flight and he just made all that up. Yeah. And he got a haircut. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Hear me out here, okay. right? Oh. Uh, let me try to make something up. It goes, he leaves New York, okay. right? Gets a haircut, right? Obviously, he, if he uses his passport, uh -huh. right, or his ID, or yeah. buys a plane ticket, yeah. there's record of him. Right. Right, because they probably check that. They yeah. looked at the flight logs. Yeah. Gets a haircut, changes his identity, has a fake ID, buys a ticket underneath a different name, <laughs> Burns his phone because he's scared that there's a tracker in it, right? So he buys a burner phone at the airport, right? Yeah. Puts some money on it, no name attached to it. Oh. So he can contact his, you know, his mistress. mistress. Gets to Sacramento, right? Has some fun. Whatever he's doing. Maybe he's playing video games. Yeah. Who knows, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he's like, you know, it's time. It's time I got to go back. Yeah. Right. You know, I memorized my wife's number. Calls her up. Says, hey, what's going on? <laughs> We're looking for you. Really? I don't know where I am. I'm somewhere. But I saw in, like, some of the articles. So, apparently, they had, like, brain tests on him. Okay. Now, some of the doctors were saying that he must have suffered a brain injury if he doesn't remember. But they're not sure. But is he choose? Can you choose not to remember? Like, can he just say that he doesn't remember? Will that show up on the brain test? Probably not. Is there a lie detector going on? Probably not. Bro, the guy is probably lying. That's just so crazy, though. I mean, I believe I want to believe him. Yeah. Right. And I, I'm sure that the police interviewed him, right? right. And the guy's probably like frantic, and he's like probably stressed the heck out. Yeah. And I'm sure he, if he, if he probably wasn't eating, right? And we, right, for six days. Yeah. Who knows, right? Yeah. This, he said the reason why he won't take a press interview is because he like doesn't want to talk about it. He's doing a lot better now. He's trying to just move forward from it. Interesting. Yeah. As if he remembers. Like, what's he, he can have a press conference, and then it's be like, what did you experience? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, what, what, I, yeah, a press interview wouldn't even do anything. Yeah. Dude, get the bag, man. Get the bag. Get on there. Get on. Start talking. <laughs> Write a book. Write a book about your experience. That would be very traumatizing, though, right? Uh, yeah, I know. To, I'm, just, to, I'm just joking around. No, no, no. I know. But it, it's like, that would be very scary to just appear somewhere. And you don't know how you got there. That's why I feel like it's not true. Yeah, like, I, I know. I believe the story is real. Yeah. Right? Because it's real. Because there's news reports and stuff. Right. I just feel like maybe the guy's lying. But, you know, I wouldn't know that until, like, I see photos of him and, like, video of him. Yeah. I shouldn't make that assumption without seeing any evidence. But, but it makes sense. It's a hard story to believe. Yeah. It is a hard story to believe. It is. Because six days and you don't know how you were missing for six days. Yeah. I have to say, if I was missing for six days, it's weird. It's weird to think about. Like. You know, I, this week I talked about that kid from Bangladesh, right? Yeah. You know, he was stuck on the container, shipping oh container for six gosh, days. Oh, yeah. And when he got out of, this, out of the container, you know, he didn't eat or drink, so he was very, like, 
malnourished. He had right. dehydration. So I just couldn't imagine what that guy went through either. You know, maybe he yeah. had something similar. Yeah, but for the next crazy story, like this one's insane. So there's this 24 year old lady who married a millionaire. Like this guy has a bunch of money. Okay. But the lady wants a hundred kids. Like she's not joking. She seriously said she wants a hundred kids. How is that even possible? How could someone have a hundred kids? Okay, so this is where it gets crazy. So she already has one kid and her husband already had nine. So they already have a family of 10 and she wants a hundred kids before she's 30. So that means she has to have 13 kids a year. So they decided to pay women to have have their children as a surrogate and keep in mind one surrogate is upwards from $190,000 to $250,000 per baby. Dude, that's some crazy money. Yeah, but what's even crazier, they had 21 surrogate children in one year. What? So that's $3.9 million on top of the 100,000 they pay for nannies every year. How do you even raise 100 kids? I don't understand that. How are you helping these kids? Like, I mean, yeah, they're going to He's a millionaire, right? So they're going to have a lot of money. Yeah. But how can you form any kind of relationship with a kid when you have a hundred of them? Exactly. That's really sad. And they have like, they're like paying a hundred thousand for nannies. I don't even know how many nannies they have, but they yeah. have a lot, right? A hundred thousand dollars? No, I know. But think about this, right? Think about the life these kids are going to live. Right. And then you got to think about the expensive expenses of just kids being alive, right? Yeah. I think the average parent, right? Not millionaires, right? Okay. Just the yeah. average parent, right? Uh -huh. I'm pretty sure the average salary in America is like what seventy seventy thousand dollars? No, I think it's like fifty. Fifty? I think it's I think it's any the average is anywhere from like thirty to fifty, I you think. You know what the average like parent spends on a kid? What? A million dollars. Shut up. Yeah. A million dollars. Are you kidding me? No, I'm serious. That's like with an average salary in the United States. Dude, what? So just think about 100 kids. They're going to be paying $100 million. And these kids are going to obviously cost more, right? Because you're going to have, you know, nannies. Yeah. Chauffeurs. Oh gosh. That's really sad when you think about it. Yeah, you're right. The life they're going to live, it's going to be hard. Yeah, it's going to be horrible. I don't, I wonder what's the thought process between the mom, like for the mom to be like, yeah, I want 100. Yeah. Like, yeah. How do you build that parent? child relationship yeah with a hundred kids yeah i don't understand that that's insane it's like they're trying to make the x-men academy <laughs> professor xavier <laughs> she watched one x-men movie like honey let's do this maybe one out of the hundred will be like you know wolverine <laughs> i just really hope those kids have a good life i don't i don't i don't know how you can like actually have a parent child relationship when yeah. you have a hundred and i think the husband is in his late 50s oh my god yeah bro's the old dad so i think that's why she was trying to have all the kids she can before 30 what yeah but moving on it wouldn't be a just a nobody's podcast without some scary stories dun 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 <laughs> prepare to be <laughs> something i don't know <laughs> yeah so this one was actually pretty creepy like this one gave me the creeps so your disclaimer for everybody that's watching this at 10 o'clock at night right now, maybe save this part for tomorrow morning. <laughs> maybe. Just turn on a light. Turn on a light. Yeah, so have you ever seen the cursed Kleenex commercial? There's actually a cursed Kleenex commercial? Yeah, so in Japan, a Kleenex commercial released, and this was probably one of the weirdest commercials ever. Like, there was just a baby with a green wig and a lady sitting next to him just pulling Kleenex out of a Kleenex box. And the entire commercial was just creepy music the entire time. But what's crazy is when people say that they watch the commercial, like, completely through, weird occurrences start to happen, and some people, like, go insane. What kind of commercial is this? So what happened was people started to complain because they said it was, like, messing them up mentally. So they had to ban the commercial and take it off the air but then someone uploaded it online and people were saying when you watch it after 12 a.m like weird things start to happen so like you see like the faces change or like the video gets all messed up wait why is that even happening but what's even more messed up is that all the people that worked on the commercial like the crew all had weird things happen to them so the cameraman mysteriously went missing and he was found dead inside of a sauna after the commercial released and he was perfectly healthy do they know how he died in the sauna so apparently the sauna that he was in just malfunctioned out of nowhere and all the other crew like of the commercial all had bad luck except for the lady that was pulling the kleenex out of the box and if you look up the song that was playing like it's called like it's a fine day or something like that it's one of the creepiest songs i've ever heard so it seems like whoever is pulling out the kleenex is safe but whoever is watching the commercial is not yeah so she was the only one that was like didn't have bad luck after the commercial so the crew that worked on the commercial had bad luck yeah and then you're not supposed to watch the commercial because i guess it'll like make you go insane who would have thought such a crazy situation yeah and you know 
I didn't watch the full thing. I watched a little bit of it. Did it seem like it was really weird? It was extremely weird. So was the production value high? Like, can you tell us? Like, oh, wow. This is like, a, no. oh, really? That's what made it creepy, though. Production value seemed really low. It was like one of those like low quality videos. It was really weird. We got 360p. Yeah. I mean, it was okay. It was in the 80s. Oh, okay. So it was like a little lower quality, but it seems like it should have been better than what it was. So in the commercial, does it break down like, this is our Kleenex? No. This is what the softness is like. I'm going to tell you, this is all it was. Okay. Okay. There's a little baby. Has a green wig on. Yeah. He got like, that's That's so weird. That yeah. Is a baby with a green wig. That's really weird. Yeah. So then there's like a lady sitting next to him just okay. pulling the Kleenex out. Yeah. And where is she putting the Kleenex just, when she pulls it out? She just like this. Letting it all fly out? Yeah. And there's this song playing. It's called It's a Fine Day. Okay. It has nothing to do with Kleenex. Okay. It ha- it's the weirdest sounding song. Uh-huh. And then the, and then the commercial ends. There's no... The, the, the people in the thing, the commercial don't talk. So there's no call to action. Like, no. Come buy our new Kleenex. All you see is the, the two of them sitting there. She's pulling out the Kleenex. Then it goes black screen, and it says Kleenex. We should try to buy it. We should try to buy the Kleenex. Dude, I don't know. If this video gets... Four or five thousand likes, we will get the Kleenex. It, it's such a weird music video. Just if you listen to it, not music video, commercial, right? So yeah, car- commercial. Sorry, <laughs> but the the music is so eerie. Like you can tell they try to use a song that has like it's kind of trying to be happy, but it's like one of those like creepy happy. Oh gosh. Yeah. All right. This next part of the podcast is called "Whose Side You On," where Leia comes on and talks about a real life story. I'm talking a real life story. Okay. These are real life people with real life feelings. So be kind. Okay. But also speak the truth. <laughs> Expose those that need to be exposed. But be nice. Be nice about it. <laughs> be chill. You know. <laughs> Don't gotta make their lives miserable, but you gotta teach them a lesson sometimes. So here comes Leia. Woo, Leia. All right, Leia. Ready to hear some crazy stories? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Whose side you on? Is the writer wrong or right? Am I wrong for uninviting my friend because my other friend doesn't like her? Ooh. Hmm. This is relatable. Kind of, right? I feel, like this is pretty, I feel like a lot of people go through this. Yeah, I feel like tons of people go through this. So listen up. <laughs> so some context. I'm 19 female. Jam is 18 female and is a close friend of mine. We met in our sophomore year of high school and didn't end up getting close till junior year, and now we are roommates in college. Ash, 19 female, and I met in sixth grade and have been really close ever since. And Kat, 18 female, and Cam, 19 female, are childhood friends of mine. Both of them go to college out of state. Ash hates Jem because she said she finds Jem's general shyness super annoying and uncomfortable. Jem is the kind of person who is shy when you first meet her, but really funny and nice when you get to know her. Jem is really good friends with Kat and Cam. Both of them are only in town this week. Jem and I really wanted to hang out with them. So we hung out all day yesterday, and today is Ash's only day off of work, and she wanted to hang out with Kat, Cam, and me, but not Jem. Ash announced she was coming over to my house five minutes before Jem was about to head over. I hadn't seen Ash in a while because of her busy work schedule, and Kat and Cam haven't seen her since the summer. I told Ash that Jem was about to head over, and Ash said that if Jem was going, she wasn't going to show up. Oof. I really want to see Ash, and I see Jem every day, so I sent Jem a text and told her what Ash said. Jem said she understood that there were no hard feelings and that she didn't want to make anyone uncomfortable. When Kat heard about this, she said that Ash and I were being mean. And, I feel bad now, but I don't want either of my friends to be uncomfortable. But I want to see Ash. Am I wrong? Whose side do you want? Mm, interesting. I, I do have to say this. There was a lot of characters going on, yeah. a lot of moving parts. <laughs> Jem is the one that's... Um, the shy you know but when you get to know her she's i don't agree with people not liking someone because they're shy i feel like if someone's shy and you're gonna hate on them because they're shy that makes things awkward bro like well then just try to help them be more social like talk to them yeah try to help them get more acclimated to the situation she's probably just like a slow to warm person and like you know but that's okay like everyone's personality is different yeah well i think okay maybe she's not slow to warm maybe she's just like, she mm, is true. trying to like them, and she's just quiet. Yeah, I just think that's so, like, psycho of someone to be like, oh, like, I don't like them because they're shy. Like, yeah. well, why don't you be the first one to talk to them then? Mm-hmm. Why does everyone have to talk to you first? I like, think that being the reason makes it really, like, what is this? Yeah, I feel like it's so, like, petty. Like, yeah. And not cool. Yeah. And then Jem, th- obviously, is trying to be nice and, like, doesn't want to, like, Fluster, you know, like doesn't want to cause any trouble. So she's like, "Oh, it's okay. Like I understand." No, girl, 
Like I feel like this <laughs> even me, like sometimes like I think I'm pretty like social. Mm-hmm. But there's times where like I'm like shy and like don't really know the situation, right? Mm. So I feel like that's so like not cool. Like I would never judge someone for being shy. Yeah. If anything, I would like want to talk to them and be like, hey, like, you know, how can I help them be more comfortable? Yeah, I just think like the uninviting thing, like you don't have to like go there. If anything, like, okay, I guess like now you know and now you're aware of like the situation. So I guess hang out with these people separately then, if like that makes it easier for you. <laughs> but you don't have to like invite somebody and then uninvite them because like that would hurt you, wouldn't it? Like if you got invited to something. And then you yeah. found out later on, like, oh, I got uninvited because this one girl thinks I'm, like, shy or whatever, you know? That's so it's wrong. It's just rude. Yeah. I think a lot of people, I could be wrong, and I could be reaching on this, but, like, don't you think, like, people that's, like, that petty reason for them not to like someone because they're shy, it's almost like they're projecting. They could be. Right? Like, that they have be, issues yeah. within themselves that maybe they don't, they like Gemma. They like, they think, like, Gem. what, Gem. Right, yeah. Jem's like really actually like a really nice person, right? Could be. And yeah. they're trying to find a way because they feel like inferior to Jem. So they're like Could be. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Something along the lines of that. Like I wouldn't doubt that, yeah. And they're like, Oh, like, you know, I don't like Jem because they're uh sh- they're like trying to think of something like, oh shot. Like their favorite color is purple or something. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's like, kinda like that, like, right. So I wonder yeah. if it's something like that. Could be, you know. That's so wrong. What do, what do you guys think? Yeah, comment <laughs> what you guys think, but I feel that well, one, you shouldn't un- uninvite someone just because someone else yeah. doesn't like them. Yeah. They the got to grow wrong. up. Yeah. Got to sure. coexist in this world. Yes. <laughs> this one's kind of funny, <laughs> but it's not. It's not funny. It's funny, but it's not funny. <laughs> Two side <laughs> one. Is the boyfriend wrong or right to do this? My 23 female boyfriend, 25 male, left me on the side of the road and I deserved it. <laughs> what? <laughs> I just thought it was really funny when I read that. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. Here we go. My amazing, beautiful boyfriend had decided to treat me to dinner since we'd both had long weeks. He was making me laugh, and we were talking and having a really good time. After we were done and we left, and we were about halfway home, I asked him if we could stop and get some dessert. He said something like, haha, didn't we just eat? And keeps driving. My stupid, selfish self pushes it and <laughs> says, come on, please, I want something sweet. He replies that we have ice cream at home and continues driving. After that, I kept on pushing it and pushing it and pushing it. And while he's been way more patient with me than I deserve, he's firm and says no again. I give up, but then I seek a fast food restaurant up the road and jokingly pull the wheel to go into the parking lot. Oh, my gosh. That is so extra. Oh, my gosh. That is extra. Apparently, I pulled harder than I thought because we actually ended up swerving and hit another car lightly. Oh, my God. To make things worse, he just bought this car. Oh. <laughs> the driver motions for us to pull into the parking lot. And when we do, he and my boyfriend get out and the driver starts cussing him out and saying horrible things to him, even though there wasn't any damage to both the cars. The bumper just has a little dent on it. OK, but that's still that's, a damage. <laughs> yeah, that is something. <laughs> and the other car had no damage. They didn't even exchange any information. While he's being yelled at, I don't get out of the car and let him be punished for something I did. When he gets back in and starts driving, he's gripping the steering wheel so hard that the veins on his arms are popping out. His entire face is red and he hasn't said anything to me. To try and break the tension a little, I say, well, that could have gone a lot worse. (laughs) Oh, my God. And as soon as I say that, he stomps on the brakes and just tells me to get out of his sight in the angriest voice imaginable. Wow. I've never felt afraid of him, but in that moment, I did. He looked like he was struggling not to hurt me. I got out, and he sped off. It was starting to get dark, and I was in the stretch of woods. It almost took an hour for me to walk home, but when I got there, him and all his stuff were gone. I felt so horrible. I can't even apologize to him because he hasn't been responding to my calls and texts. Wow. We've had fights before about my childish quirks when they got a little bit too far. And now I don't have a boyfriend anymore because of it. I've been getting texts like, what is wrong with you from our friends? So I think he's told them what happened. As he should. (laughs) As he should. It seems like everybody's mad at me. Is there any way to fix this? How can I apologize to them when all of our friends are siding with him? Was he wrong to do that? Whose side are you on? Girl. Oh, my gosh. This would make a great advertisement, though, for McDonald's. <laughs> Say, like, our ice cream ruins, yeah, will make your car go crazy. Oh, my gosh. Honestly, though, like, that's really scary. The fact that she actually, like, pulled the steering yeah, wheel. Yeah, that is over-the-top extra. I'm because, sorry, but, like, girl. Because no matter how lightly you pulled it, like, you're still putting, like, both your lives in danger. 
Yeah. Like. And you're putting other people in danger. Exactly. Obviously, she hit somebody. Yeah. So. And you know what's crazy about her? She goes, there was no damage. Like, why is he getting upset? And then she I goes, know. like, the bumper's all screwed up. And, like, imagine if that was your car, right? Like, you would be upset. Like, she, if it happened to her, she'd probably be like, oh, my gosh. Like, what I, happened? I just feel, though, maybe he should have just drove her home and just said, like, yeah. I'm done with you. Yeah. Because, like. <laughs> You shouldn't leave her an hour away from her house. And yeah, because that, home. I feel like that is, like, not, ooh. Yeah. Just because of, like, safety reasons, too, like, for her. I know he was really angry, but, like, I think, yeah, he definitely should have, like, drove her home first. Yeah. But what she did, like, that's no I just feel excuse. like. Excuse. Okay, so let me ask you this. Now, if a guy did it and, like, grabbed the wheel. Uh-huh. And the girl dropped, made him walk an hour home. Like, is that okay? No. Like, if that was me, like, if I was the one driving yeah. and, like, my boyfriend did that, I would be really upset. But, like, I think what I would want to do is, like, talk to him about, like, look, like, what you did was not okay. You put our lives in danger. Even if it was just the slightest turn, like, you don't just grab the wheel when somebody else is driving. Yeah. But, like, I think, like, because I wouldn't want that to happen to me, too. And I don't know. That's just not. That's just not like moral. Like I don't. I don't know. I wouldn't leave the person on yeah. the side of the road, especially when it's like an hour away. Even if it was thirty minutes, fifteen minutes away, I wouldn't leave somebody on the. And road. I'm pretty sure we could assume that. I mean, it's nighttime, right? Yeah, Desert. it was almost dark, and then like she also where she was was like near woods, basically. Yeah. So, you never know. Yeah. So. Slenderman could come out. <laughs> so definitely, like he was, he was wrong for doing that. But what she did was terrible, too. Yeah, but you know what? I feel this. Like, she probably, she screwed up big time, right? And I think she's in the wrong. Yeah, Yeah, I, I think do. she's 100% in the wrong. But she, she saw her boyfriend, like, at the max anger, right? Mm. And that's how he handled it. So you might have dodged a bullet in a sense. Does that Ooh. make sense? I guess, yeah. He might be kind of toxic. I would be upset, too, if I was him, right? But I wouldn't, I would never hit, you know what I mean? Or, like, try to do anything physical. Like, she said that he might hit her. Well, yeah, because, like, of how angry. Like, the imagery of, like, his veins and, like, how red his face was. And, like, he looked like he was just going to lose it. Yeah, and I would never, like, if that happened to you and I, I would never leave you at, like, a hour I hope away. not. <laughs> I hope you guys won't either. <laughs> <laughs> Comment who you guys feel is right and wrong on this one. I feel like it's pretty obvious that, you know, the girl is wrong. Yeah. 100 percent the writer. he's wrong. For leaving her, though, on the side of the road. Yeah, I but get that. For but her, it was like, th that was wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't see how she, you're, you're going to redeem that. I think your boyfriend's done with you. So, uh, yeah. Moral of the story, don't touch the wheel when someone else is driving. Absolutely not. Because <laughs> it could ruin your relationship and kill you <laughs> at the same time. Yeah, All right, Leia. Spouse. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, guys, if you made it this far on the podcast, thank you so much for watching and listening. If you're on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, make sure you guys leave a like on this video. If this video gets 3,000 likes, we're going to be giving one of these hot toys away to you guys. So make sure you guys comment something that you like about the show or comment what you guys want us to talk about or comment what hot toy you like. Comment whatever you want. Comment whatever you want. <laughs> also, uh, be nice. Yeah, be nice. Be good to each other. Love each other. Be one with the force. Wow. Yeah. Feel the force flow <laughs> through your body. <laughs> we'll see you guys tomorrow on TikTok, and we'll see you guys next Saturday on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. We'll see you on the TikTok. God bless you guys. See ya. Love ya.